And then Blizzard says to you, yeah, okay, that's going to cost you your favorite theme transmog. It's going to cost you your favorite theme zone. It's going to cost you your favorite stories. It's going to cost you already level soul binds. You're going to have to start again, even with catch-up mechanics. And it's going to cost you all the progress you already made inside that system of the Sanctum. You really think the average player base is going to be okay with that when that reality sets in on them? Holla ballers, it's Preacher, and to kind of cap out this conversation before the beta gets going, it's been a flurry of activity over the weekend, uh, lots of attention coming my way, I'm sorry I can't respond to everybody, huge amounts of DMs, like paragraphs and paragraphs of stuff have been sent at me, with solutions and fixes and all this kind of stuff, but we're not there, uh, we've put out our feelings, we've let Blizzard know, but a big question a lot of people ask me is, one, do you think they're going to change this, and if so, when? Uh, is it going to be a repeat of, say, Azerite Armor, where it's like 8 point, you know, all the way up until 8.1, they were really still doubling down on it and hammering down on that. We're going to make this work. And then they're like, oh, okay, it's not going to work. Uh, and even up until 8.2. Um, is it going to be like the legendary system where we don't find out until like a month later into the game that, you know, they've soft capped it and all the farming you've done has not been worthwhile? All these kinds of things. Or are they going to maybe do something during the beta? My hope, of course, is that they do something during the beta. Uh, but realistically... <laughs> Depending on how many people get into the beta, the likelihood is this is... I do think this is going to change, first of all. I do think they're going to get rid of this. I'm going to expand on that shortly. Uh, but um, I think it's probably going to be 9.1. And the reason for that is right now, the argument is really based in the extremes. And that's not how we do this. Uh, it's not. It doesn't work. Uh, so on the one hand, you've got all these people who uh, you know, understand that 2% DPS, certainly across a rating, can be a very big deal. And certainly when they do the content they enjoy, that some of these abilities are really big deal. And at the other end, you've got people who simply have never experienced that. So telling people that, hey, this matters to people who have never been affected by it and frankly don't care that you don't you deal with it isn't going to work. It doesn't work. They don't, they're don't. they not going to experience it. Just as we at the top end can't really understand how somebody would be okay with being much weaker. That makes no sense to us. So you've got these two things at the very extreme ends of the player base trying to shout at each other. But of course, Blizzard isn't going to change anything for those ends. They change it when the main body gets affected. I mean, we've got historical precedent for that all the way through. In the Burning Crusade, they didn't upgrade the Karazhan loot, despite the fact the raiders who were there, like, capped and in there, like, day one, are telling them, hey, this loot is worse than blues from, <laughs> from dungeons. Uh, it wasn't until the main body got in Karazhan, who had been farming their dungeons in order to start raiding, and then they got in there and they were like, whoa, what the hell? This Karazhan loot is really bad. Uh, and then, Bl then Blizzard changed it, and it was a long time after. We deleted and disenchanted tons of items because they were worse than what we were currently wearing. Um, same through, say, even Kata. Uh, if we look through even Wad, uh, BRF loot didn't really get... The, the decision wasn't made until it was also the normal and heroic raiders who were saying, hang on a minute, BRF loot is just no good. Uh, what the hell? A lot of the, and Azerite armor the same. It wasn't until everybody really got a grip with the Azerite armor did Blizzard go, okay, yeah, maybe we kind of screwed the pooch on this one. So it's when the main body hits it. Now the big question is, do I think the main body is going to hit this? Yes, and it's not being talked about enough. So I'd like to bring it up today uh, before we get into the beta, because hopefully if if people understand or resonate with what I'm about to say, then maybe Blizzard can go, yeah, maybe this isn't quite the right idea. Um, or they'll say, we thought about that and we don't really care, which is fair enough. Uh, but when is the main body going to hit this? And it's going to be after launch, more than likely. And it's probably going to be when the dust settles. And I mean by, you're in your routine. So, whatever pace you go at. doesn't matter. Hardcore, casual, irrelevant. It's just whenever you hit your stride. And more and more people start hitting that stride of their end game, whatever they like to do. And the likelihood is that throughout the history of World of Warcraft... There's been a time where you've watched a video or you've played alongside somebody in a dungeon or you've been in a group with somebody or you've seen somebody in the open world and they're doing, they're the same class and they're doing something different to you. And you've just thought to yourself, that looks pretty cool. And that's it. I'd like to mess around with that because I'm a shaman, he's a shaman, I'd like to do that. And that's where the first time ever in the history of WoW, the game is going to tell you, no, you can't. Now, you, what you can do is... You can swap and go and try that out, but you're not coming back. Not without a massive, massive, massive hurdle. And that's when it's going to happen. Now, you're going to fire at me, I'm sure, that you get to test all these things while leveling, right, Mike? You get to test all these things while leveling, so that's on them. That's their fault. That's, that's not a good reason. Well, think about how people level. 
Everybody levels differently. Maybe you completed 100% of the first zone. Remember, it's linear leveling in the Shadowlands. You don't jump around. You go from Bastion to Maldraxxus to Ardenweald to Revendreth in that order. Everybody's going to go that order. So you do 100% of Bastion. Love that zone. It's fucking awesome, bro. Did all the side quests and stuff. And then I got sent off to Maldraxxus. Ugh, didn't like it. So I did the story campaign as quickly as possible. What did that mean? I didn't really get to play around with the Necro Lord ability that much. In fact, the truth of the matter is, there are several of the Covenant abilities that don't even work in the open world. Mages have abilities like that. Priests have abilities like that. They just don't work. Like, you can try it. But the chances are, you're going to think it's pretty shit. Because it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. Hmm. So you're going to skip past it and say, well, that's not why I'm going to do it. Uh, maybe you are a tank. But you like to level as DPS. Plenty of people do that as well. So you never really got to try out that ability in tanking. And I know some of you will go, well, that's your fault. You're supposed to check out all these things and do all these checks and balances before you move on. It's like, this is a game and I like to level how I like to level. You're throwing, you're suggesting that everybody in the game, the million, you know, a million or however plus players, have all got to follow this little checklist to make sure. Or if you're a healer and you go and you try it out, it's pretty, you know, it's... I didn't heal that zone. that For that little lead, level banding, I didn't do a dungeon for that little level banding. And so I never got to try out the healer ability. I was DPS. I just DPS through it and I moved on to the next zone where it was much cooler. How many people don't level a lot in zones where they just don't like the theme? It happens all the time. Like Bastion's so glowy and angelic, beautiful. I went with Maldraxxus, green, toxic, reminded me of Legion, hated Legion. And, ugh, I'm not going to level there. And then I moved on to Ardenweald, glorious, beautiful. Couldn't wait to get there. I got through it as quickly as I, I got through Maldraxxus as quickly as humanly possible. Some of these abilities are on big cooldowns, so you didn't really use it that much. Some of them are weird, like Druid Venthyr ability stuns you, does damage to you. I'm not taking that. Kind of is the best one. That's the nature of what we're looking at here. There's a whole multitude of reasons why you might not have even got to really check these things out. But the likelihood is you're going to see that video. You're going to see somebody doing something. Or perhaps if it is a case that it didn't work for you in the open world, like some of these don't, you're going to figure it out afterwards. Go, oh, actually, that's pretty sick. Let me just put it this way. You're a warrior and you're leveling. And through your leveling, you think Bladestorm is the tits. Not only that, it's your favorite theme. You love Bladestorm. You love the zone it comes with. You love all that stuff. So you choose Bladestorm. Then, a few months down the line, you see your boy using Ravager. You see him doing some cool stuff you can't do. In fact, in the BG, you die because someone threw a Ravager behind a pillar or something like that. And you think to yourself, I just want to try that out for a couple of days. Didn't make any sense while I was leveling, but I'd like to give it a whirl. Probably not going to keep it. And then Blizzard says to you, yeah, okay, that's going to cost you your favorite theme transmog. It's going to cost you your favorite theme zone. It's going to cost you your favorite stories. It's going to cost you already level soulbinds. You're going to have to start again, even with catch-up mechanics. And it's going to cost you all the progress you already made inside that system of the Sanctum. You really think the average player base is going to be okay with that when that reality sets in on them? I'm going to try out Shadow for a couple of days, right? I've got a load of farming this weekend. I'm going to go Shadow for a... Shadow for a couple of days. I kind of want to try out healing a little bit. I'm going to swap over to healing for a couple of days. And then you're going to realize that the abilities you have don't work in that environment or aren't very good. That's that's true of a lot of the Covenant abilities. And then you're going to be like, I'd like to take the at least the healing ability. And the game's going to say, no, you can't. Nope. If you want to do that, you need to reroll your whole class. For real. If you want to spend an extended period of time with that without having to drop it and then come back to the other one by Monday and overcome this massive hurdle, that's really a re-rolling thing. And Blizzard's trying to sell this as a subclass. It's not. The soul binds are nearly entirely passive things. They're nothing compared to a class. Two abilities and passives are not a class. A ma the difference between a mage and a warlock and a warlock and a rogue is not two spells and some passive abilities. It's not true. No matter how... The, the, the marketing is really quite infuriating on this because it's just not true most people are going to look at the abilities right and i know a lot of people are like oh don't say most people but what's the big standout thing from all the covenants that you see in the open world in gameplay it's the abilities some people are going to see that giant paladin venthia death and decay and be like whoa what is that i kind of want to just mess around with it i don't want it forever i just like to play with it death knight's abomination limb is it the most practical out of the bunch? No. 
Could it be fun for a weekend or so? Yeah. Do I want it forever? No. But I'm a death knight. I'd certainly like to enjoy what's on offer for death knights. I've leveled my death knight. I've geared my death knight. I don't want to make a second death knight to try out that one spell. I didn't get to even use it while I was leveling. It had no purpose for me in the open world. But over there, that looks really fun. That's when it's going to hit the main body. And that's when it's really going to fall down for me. Is when the majority of the player base is just... For, wants to have some fun. And just looks at something that their class can do. And the game is going to be telling them no. Unless you commit to it. It's like, well, I don't know if I want to commit to it. I have no idea if I want to commit to it. I Sure, I saw a cool stream where the guy was doing cool stuff with it. So, okay, I'll swap and I'll, I'll commit. I'll go over to it. Okay, I tried it out for a week. Yeah, it was fun. I could do some really silly stuff. But honestly, I chose my first ability because I find it the most fun. So I kind of like to go back to it now. Oh, I've got to do some sort of immense hurdle to do that? Why? I just wanted to try out a spell for a couple of weeks, man. That's all. I don't want to re-roll for that. I don't want to have to jump through giant hoops just to make that happen. I don't give a shit what the soul binds do. That's why it's to try out a fucking being able to grip people for 20 seconds. I want to try out buffing my friend because I'm a priest and I can make him do crazy damage for a little period of time. That sounded like fun. I just wanted to goof around with it. Do I want it all the time? No. But it looked like fun. And I'm a priest and he's a priest. So why the fuck can't I do that? And the game's going to say no. And I think that's where a lot of people are going to get. It's just the fun factor. They just want to have fun. They want to play around with their class options. And the game is actively going to tell them no. And there's other elements to it as well. We're all basing choices on a whole number of things. Weekly events. The theme. The, the current abilities. And what they do right now. Ignoring the fact that they could change after they come out. We're making a lot of choices. That are very committal. And they spoil just fun. And that's what really pisses me off. Like more than anything. It pisses me off. Because I don't see... The amount of people... When I was a raid leader and guild master in, in vanilla. Original vanilla, not classic. In vanilla. And my healers came to me and they're like, Yo, I want to do some farming. So I, I really want to goof around on enhancement this weekend. Is that cool? Because I, I don't want to heal this weekend. I'd be like, yeah, cool. And they just tell me they had a great time just messing around. Do they want a main enhancement? No, not at all. And you're going to say, you can still do that. You can still do that. <laughs> some of the abilities are so bad for enhance, but great for resto that it's practically a dead button on enhancement. That's not fun. It doesn't matter if you're okay and you can get through things and you'll be fine. Like, thanks for the pat on the back, but I'd like to have fun. Is that okay? Yeah, having access... I know that that spell's really fun for enhancement and I'm an enhancement shaman and I'm capped and I've done all these things. I just want to try out the fucking spell. Is that okay? No, apparently. Apparently not. And I think that's when it's really going to hit. I think that's when it's going to hit with a lot of people and it's going to be like... <sighs> This kind of sucks. But I think that's what's going to resonate with a lot more people, is realizing that environment where you're like, oh, shit, I chose this based, I chose this spell based on leveling, but the other one looks really fun, so I want to go over to that. Okay, I'll drop my covenant, I'll move over to that one. Oh, it's not actually that good. How often have we done that? How many people have used a boost on a class that they thought was really fun and then didn't end up even playing it hardly? They logged in and they're like, eh, it's not actually that fun compared to what I thought it was going to be. I'm going to go back to the one originally. <laughs> that's when it's gonna hit man anyway beta's coming beta's coming hey i don't get why anybody champions this system <laughs> like, i really don't man i don't get why anybody is like this is such a good idea that i can't play with all my all my classes spells awesome i can't wait till i really want to try out that other thing for like even a couple of days and the game tells me no i'm gonna be like shit that was a meaningful choice gotta live with that consequence in my video game I don't get any champion in this. I, I probably never will. I probably never will. But I think that aspect of it hasn't been talked about enough is that how it is going to affect those people who just want to try out doing some, trying out their new spells for a brand new expansion for a little bit longer than they got in their leveling zone, right? <laughs> I mean, that's all I'm saying. All right, be good. <laughs> Bye-bye.